Welcome everyone, Joe of Tech Broadcast. I have another quick system build I actually wanted to throw up here for you. And this is actually going to focus on mainly gaming. And what I allowed here was a $2,000 budget. And what that actually is going to include is everything you're gonna to need to get this system started, minus speakers. I do have a monitor included, a keyboard, a mouse, everything you need to do some 1440p gaming, which I think is the, the key resolution uh, for gaming. 4K is the future, but I don't think we're quite there yet. So I have a $2,000 budget. It's mainly going to be focused on gaming with an idea of jumping into 4K here in the near future. That being said, let's jump in and see what components we got. For the processor, I'm with Intel Core i5-6600K. This is a new quad-core Skylake processor. Yes, it does not have hyper-threading, but that's really a main key feature for uh, video editing. Honestly, you're going to need to jump to six or eight core just to get a few more frames per second uh, in your gaming. So I would actually get this processor for $240. It's actually over at B&H, which is a weird spot for it to be the lowest price point that I found at. But you're going to get a quad core, new quad core processor for $240. I would not hesitate to pick this up and you probably be able to use it for three, four, five years and not have any, any uh, performance hits on it and any game that you actually want to throw at it. For the core, I went with the Nocto NH-U12S. This is, in my eyes, the best cooler for the price. For $66, it's the best air cooler out there, if you ask me. And out of 222 customer reviews, it gets a 4.8, so it's highly reviewed as just being a great cooler. I would get that. If you, don't, if you want to go liquid cooling, you could do that, but you're going to pay another 30, 40 bucks to actually do that. Uh, so this is this is what I would be. I had to cut a little bit of price point so I could get a uh, nicer high-end monitor. So that's what I would choose. For the motherboard with the ASUS Z170-K, this is ASUS's uh, new uh, Z170 chipset motherboard. It actually has a really simple design and uh, that I really like. ASUS has a great BIOS that I really prefer over some of the other ones out there. Uh, there's nothing against Gigabyte or MSI. They have great BIOS and ASRock. Uh, but I just prefer the, the UEFI and ASUS is a little better. You can get a little overclocking out, a little bit better overclocking out of it. Uh, it may have a few more features, but honestly, just pick which motherboard you prefer in my eyes. Make sure it gets good reviews. This is going to set us back uh, under $140. So about $135, bucks, we are going to get a nice mid-grade uh, motherboard with every feature you're going to need on it. You're going to have more features on this than you actually want. You've got an M.2 uh, SATA drive, you've got uh, USB 3.1, there's nothing on this uh, motherboard that you're not going to be able to do. Went with the memory, I actually cheaped out here a little bit. I got memory without heat sinks, which may not be uh, everyone's preference. What works up here is the Mushkin uh, Enhanced Essentials, 8GB, 2x4, DDR4 memory. Uh, running at 2133 megahertz for $55. That is an insane price point considering how expensive memory has been here in the in the future and the past actually. But $55 I picked this up. Eight gigabytes is all really all you need to start with. That's usually what I recommend people go with. And then from there you can actually jump up and get a little bit more depending on your needs. I ran eight gigabytes of memory for a long time and I didn't have to upgrade till recently because video editing files are started getting a little large and I started throwing some graphics in there. For the storage, I went with the ADATA SP550, 120 gigabyte SSD. This isn't the fastest SSD out there. It's reliable, it gets good reviews. For 45 bucks is really why I got it. Got it. Uh, you're gonna be able to throw your OS on there and any applications you need to run. You'll be able to throw a few games on there uh, if you wanted a larger storage, you could spend 40 or $50 more and probably get a 256 gigabyte SSD and be happy with that also. With the larger storage, I went the WD Blue. This is a one terabyte. And honestly, it's the, it's the one terabyte hard drive I would recommend for anyone that doesn't want to break the bank. For $53, uh, over 3,000 reviews and it gets 4.6 out of five stars. It's a highly regarded hard drive that people tend to really like. I personally am running, I think I have a red mainly because it was a little cheaper, but usually these are the cheapest hard drives out there for that uh, one terabyte price point. With the uh, graphics card, I went the EVGA GeForce GTX 980. This is the ACX 2.0 version, and it's actually 649. I'm not really sure why the price there 
Oh, it's just because it's a little bit back stock. But $650, you're going to get what I, in my eyes, is the best uh, C, uh, uh, GPU out there. Besides something that's like a Titan X or something that's going to cost you over $1,000. But for $650, it is a graphics card that's going to be able to do 1440p gaming at any game you throw at it. And you'll be able to jump into 4K gaming if uh, you want to upgrade to that monitor in the future. That's what I would get. Uh, it runs cooler than AMD, and it uh, has an H.265 encoder, which is great if you want to do any type of streaming. Uh, it basically allows you to use it as a capture card, um, and basically you can do all the streaming and encoding through that. So I really like uh, what NVIDIA is doing there. I really like the Fury X, but there's not a whole lot of them out there, and the reviews are kind of mixed on it, so I kind of steered clear of that one with the 980 Ti. For the case, I want the Fractal Design Define R4. This is uh, the Blackout Edition with the window. You can get it without. There's many different options, as you can see, you can get there. Uh, but for 80 bucks, it's one of the better cases out there. It is a smaller ATX case, and it's easy to build in. It's got some noise dampening uh, foam on the inside, which is great. And I kind of like that it's a smaller ATX case, especially if you're looking for a smaller footprint in that ATX design. For the power supply, with the EVGA Supernova, this is an 80 plus bronze, 750 watt, semi-modular power supply run us at $50. That is a crazy low price point uh, for this type of power supply. And actually, the, if you look at the sleeving here, it actually looks all black, which is rare for a power supply this cheap. Uh, so I would pick that up. I would not hesitate to pick that up. It has five year warranty. So that's something to keep in mind also. And then we have Windows 8.1. I run us at uh, about 83 bucks. You'd have to do a rebate, but 83 bucks there. Get any Windows, Windows 7, 8.1, 10, whatever's cheapest. Uh, if you get Windows 7 or 8.1, you're actually gonna be able to upgrade it in the future. Basically once you purchase it to Windows 10. So it really doesn't matter. As long as you have an active license, 8.1 or 7, you get a free upgrade to Windows 10. So just get whatever's cheapest. For the monitor with ASUS PB278Q, this is an IPS 2560 by 1440p monitor. And this is the monitor I would personally get if I didn't already have a 1440p monitor. It covers 100% of the sRGB color gamut and it has a five millisecond response time, which I think is about, it's not one millisecond like a TN panel, but you're gonna have great viewing angles. Uh, the color game is going to be much improved over a TN, and it's only running $400. Two years ago, this monitor was running double that price. Uh, with 4K monitors coming out, the 1440p monitors have really came down in price. If we look here, out of over 800 customer reviews, it's actually getting 4.3 out of 5 stars, which is really good. It's the number one bestseller on Amazon. It's the monitor that I would personally choose if I was running 1440p, or actually if I just needed a new monitor. I'm running 1440p, but this is this this is what I would get, especially for that four hundred dollar price point. For the uh, keyboard, actually with the CM Storm, the Cooler Master C, uh, Storm Quick Fire TX, this is uh, the blue black blue backlighting and blue uh, cherry RMX keys. Yes, you can get brown or green or red switches depending on uh, what you prefer. I prefer the blue, as you can hear here. They're a little clicky, a little clackety. They're one of the louder keys out there. But I was surprised at how cheap this was at $90 and how good it looked. Uh, I honestly wanted to throw a ducky keyboard in here, but I just couldn't justify spending an extra $50 to get one. Uh, this is a great looking keyboard. It gets good reviews and it has a number pad on it, which I personally really like. Uh, but that's just me. So 90 bucks, I would pick that up, uh, especially if you're looking for a nice, good mechanical gaming keyboard. For the mouse, this is something that's subjective. Everyone likes a different different preference, but I chose the Razer Death Adder. I'm personally using one, and I have been for about five years now, and I really love the mouse. It's a great mouse. Um, it fits my hand perfectly. Again, it's all about what fits your needs. But for $40, $43, I think it's the best mouse out there. And that's it guys, that puts us a little under $1,200 or 2,000 at $1,972. So that is going to allow us a little room if we want to upgrade an SSD. You can probably get to that $2,000 price point pretty easily there. But this is a system for gaming and in my eyes, this would be one of the best options out there. There's a few things you could, you could you know, put an i7 in there or something like that. But you gotta remember I had a budget here and I wanted to get a nice monitor and I wanted to have the OS and keyboard and and everything you needed a mouse that you needed to run a system right away 
That's it, guys. Hope you guys have a great holiday. Sorry if the setup's a little weird. I am moving, so my DSLR is packed up. So generally, that's what I would be shooting this on, but everything's kind of in flux. So that's it, guys. Hope you guys have a great weekend, a safe holiday, and I'll see you guys next time.